Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga and today I'll be telling you how to checkmate with two bishops on the board. Now that's a very rare and tricky end game and that can happen with any one of us. So we should be aware of it, how to play against a lone king with two bishops and checkmate because uh, you only get 50 moves at the end to checkmate when a lone king is remaining on the board. So 50 moves is can be tricky as well if you don't know the right technique. So I'll tell you the right technique today. Let's go to the board editor and lead chess. It's a very cool tool. You can always use that to study various situations. I clear the board here, get my king on the board, get light square bishop, get a dark square bishop, and I'll just place the opponent king somewhere. And we'll analyze the board from here. Okay. Now, uh, the whole agenda is uh, simple here. All you have to do is uh, just acquire the central squares with your bishops. And how can you do that? You first need to attack the center so that bishops can reach over to the center. So I'll place my uh, dark square bishop over to b2, which hits the center and the king as well in this case, which is not necessary. If Even if king is anywhere on the board, all you have to do is hit the center and place your bishops on the center. Now, if king moves, again, now you have to acquire central squares. Uh, either of them is fine. Of course, I cannot go to the uh, other one. Otherwise, the king can hit it. So, open moves now. And I acquire the center. Once you have acquired the center, all you have to do is place your king over to f5 or c5. If the bishops were happening to be on the fifth rank, then you have to take the sixth rank control by placing your king on to the f6 or c6. Just in case you are taking control of these two squares with the bishop, that's also okay. Then again, your king will have to be placed over on e3 or f6 and then uh, push your opponent towards this side of the board. Okay, so let's walk to the center. It's opponent's turn. Opponent can do hop around here. Doesn't matter whatever he does. Uh, we'll just try and acquire the f5. Now it's your turn and oh, you cannot do go to f5 straight away, which is okay. What you do, you just play a waiting move. Now you just, of course, opponent king can anyway not come here. So can just rotate back. And now we have acquired the f5. Now why it is important to acquire the square, which is very close to your bishop. Now the idea is to then shift your bishops onto the next rank so that you will cut down on squares further. After you take control of the next rank, opponent's king would be restricted to six squares. That's all you want. You want to push your opponent king into the corner. So what we'll do after here, opponent has to move to the seventh rank. Opponent can go anyway. Say opponent goes here. Now you have to be tricky with the choices which bishop you are moving. For example, if you move bishop over to d5, the light square bishop, it can be hit with the king coming back to d6. And that would hit the bishop and then you will have to move again. Remember the 50 move rule I told in the beginning? So you have to be not wasting moves at all. So what you can do is place a dark square bishop first onto c5. Again, it's a very good bishop controlling everything. And of course, it cannot be attacked as well because light square bishop controls it. Now opponent has to move. See, opponent moves here. And you have now shifted your bishops onto the fifth rank. Next step, again, the same procedure try and acquire the next rank as well eventually and push your opponent to the last rank now again do not move the light square bishop because it can be hit with the king so move this way and if opponent goes that side you can just simply give a check now opponent has to move the other side and you can just follow the opponent now if opponent goes here uh, you can also make sure that your king moves because otherwise opponent can run away to h7 and then again, we will tr we'll be trying to chase the king the other way around. So I'll play king over to g6 here. Now opponent has got two moves. And uh, say the opponent moves here. What you can do is give a check now and move the opponent to the other side. Now you will give another check. Opponent has to move. And then this is checkmate. So it was simple, right? You just checkmated the king in the corner by slightly moving a bishop backwards then. The dark square bishop made three moves, I think, and that, uh, the light square made a couple of them or one. So it was a 20 move checkmate instead of 50. So it's pretty fast and effective. 
It might take 25 odd, depending on the situation of the king, but then you can checkmate easily with this. I hope you liked it. I hope you found it, in, it interesting. If you don't know how to checkmate with a queen itself and a king, then I have a video on that too. Please do check it out. I'll place the link in the description as well. Thanks for watching this and do share your comments. Hope to see you next time again, which is tomorrow because I don't miss out on daily videos. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.